whatever your brain did in the background in order to understand this object in the image as a lemon is known as computing since you are generating and transporting the critical issue the critical data over the public internet you have to be very much careful in handling those data find a mentor even if you are a rocket built to reach stars without proper navigation system you will be crashed in the ocean hello ashwath Hi viewers hi Krithik viewers today we have Ashwath Srinivas joining us from Tamil Nadu he is an embedded product designer working with Tata Elixi so uh, Ashwath uh, please briefly tell us where you have grown up and uh, where you have done your education of course Krithik i am Ashwath i have grown up in Salem i did my electronics and instrumentation engineering course from Sasa University Tanjore okay great Ashwath So how did you find your interest in uh, this domain particularly speaking of embedded designing Of course Krithik from my childhood I was very much biased towards the shows shown in National Geographic and uh, Discovery Science it gave me the off factor to pursue my career in engineering but still I mean till 12th standard I wasn't sure in which domain and in which engineering course but I wanted it to be a multidisciplinary course So I chose electronics and instrumentation. Turns out this is the best decision I have taken because I had good college life, good friends, and best teachers the college could provide. Till the end of third year or the mid of third year, I wasn't aware embedded systems as a career option, and I was very much intrigued uh, by the fact that a piece of sand, the microprocessor and microcontrollers. is what makes the modern world as the modern world so this is my story how i became an uh, embedded engineer okay ashwath so viewers i would like to tell you that uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence are the most heard keywords uh, in the world today but i would like to also tell you that these are on, only few of the aspects of uh, what we are uh, witnessing that is known as industry 4.0 so apart from uh, machine learning and ai we also have uh, technological fronts like cyber security biomedical engineering uh, of course the internet of thing of which embedded designing plays a crucial role so today ashwath uh, please share the agenda like uh, what you would be speaking on today i would like to speak about edge computing its features and its role in internet of things is very much newer than the internet of things itself there is a irony that edge computing is already existing but all we have to do is puzzle it together to use it effectively and i would like to highlight more points in the further session great ashwath so uh, i hand over the control over to you so ashwath just uh, briefly highlight what would be the points that you would be discussing and then you can begin with your explanation I will be starting with what is cloud computing and its role in internet of things and the issues faced by internet of things in the cloud computing model and how edge computing is going to solve those issues and I would like to highlight the major projects done by tech giants in the field of edge computing too Great so viewers uh, I uh, must assure that this would be a highly informative session so please watch till the end so ashwath please uh, begin with your uh, session i would like to start the session with this object what is this object as you might have guessed it is a lemon whatever your brain did in the background in order to understand this object in the image as a lemon is known as computing in the world of computers it's going to be bits and bytes representation of this lemon your computer will take those bits and bytes and give us some useful information those bits and bytes are also known as data if the data are generated at high rate and at high volume they are going to be computed in a separate computers which are huge in size and huge in processing power known as data centers those data centers are also known as cloud servers because they are very much uh, detached from the point where the data is generated just like the cloud is detached from the ground so the so called cloud servers if the computing is done in the cloud servers it's known as cloud computing 
So this cloud computing is very much helpful for Internet of Things. Before continuing, I would like to uh, speak briefly about Internet of Things. What is Internet of Things? It's all about making the dumb devices smarter and getting them connected to Internet. For example, take a household pump, the water pump. Attach some sensors, give some networking capabilities with some proper design and modeling of both hardware and software. It can tell you the next month's water usage and will tell you before uh, when it before it gets breakdown. And as an add-on, the water pump will be automated according to the level in the water tank. And even you can control it from any part of the world with the internet connected device. Consider the same example, same pump being alongside with the hundreds and thousands of actuators and sensors used in a process industry or a chemical industry it where uh, those actuators and uh, sensors are a part of larger process with this data and predictive maintenance your quality of service is going to be increased and also the return of investment going to be high since the predictive maintenance will alert you before anything breaks down so you can uh, stop a conveyor belt or uh, stop the machinery before it gets breakdown and this is the same reason why internet of things is being a buzzword for past five to six years now you could have understood the usefulness of cloud computing in the field of internet of things all those bulky data needs to be processed somewhere that is a data center to be converted into a useful insights if you still didn't get the big picture, I can give you an other example. Take a smart network of street lights, which is capable of collecting pressure, temperature, and humidity of a particular location and sending it to a weather prediction server. Since we have large number of data points now, it is easy towards uh, increasing the accuracy of the uh, model and we'll be getting better results. Even with this uh, cloud computing, we have some issues first one being flooding we have large number of data generated which is sent over the public internet which might be very much uh, overwhelming for the internet to handle and it may bring down the uh, networking devices and since it is on the public internet it has to be encrypted and properly handled even the cloud computing model of the internet of things has some issues first one being flooding of data since we are generating more data and transporting more data in the public internet, the current networking devices might not even be able to handle that. Since there are more data in the through and fro, it is easy for cyber criminals to act under the hood and do some vicious activities. Second one being the latency. The to and fro of data takes some time. It may be critical for some process. Take an example of an autonomous car. And the third one being the security. Since you are generating and transporting the critical issue, the critical data or the public internet, you have to be very much careful in handling those data. So in order to solve all these issues, we have a new uh, terminology called edge computing. We are taking the computing, not the entire thing, a part of uh, cloud computing towards the edge so that the critical points, critical data are handled here and rest are sent to the cloud the resultant of the edge computing are only the dummy data, dummy data okay most of you might have used a smartphone device which has a personal assistant inbuilt on that even without the internet you have seen that they are capable of analyzing our voice and doing the necessary things this is a good example of edge computing where the cloud and the edge is completely decoupled even without the internet and the cloud service, the motive is attained. So, how this edge computing is going to help Internet of Things? Since most of the data is going to be computed in-house, that means in the edge location, there is a huge number of reduce, reduction in bandwidth. And you can even add the critical data which you are not supposed to send over the internet to this edge computing and the security is very much increased for that uh, particular data points and since there is very much latency in processing of data in the edge there is an increased response time 
you might be asking me why can't we just replace the cloud computing with edge computing there is only one issue it is not the genie in the box it still has constrained computing power so since it has less cons less computation power we can't do much computation in the edge it can't be uh, as good as the cloud servers since it has let's a uh, small computation power it is a entry point for most of the attackers to get into your cloud servers because both are going to be uh, coexisting in an internet of things uh, network so it will be a heels for achilles and kryptonite for uh, superman you could get the analogy right and another one is since the smart devices are going to be computing more than ever they need more power which has to be explored very much uh, in depth and uh, maintenance and uh, operation of this edge devices are very much uh, uncharted territory for most of the people and big giants like microsoft intel are working towards that goal major projects from tech giants includes tensorflow lite from google in which the machine learning algorithms and ai algorithms can be made to run inside a small processors like stm32 and arduino from microsoft's point of view it's microsoft azure edge iot platform and intel it, they have uh, open vino it is a open sourced uh, sdk for edge computing and uh, silicon labs is very much working towards the security of edge computers i mean the microcontrollers uh they have created a secure vault the project name is secure vault which has a isolated environment for cryptographic actions inside the soc if you want to go further and explore the edge computing i would like to recommend tiny ml book from orelli and edge impulse platform with the help of edge impulse platform you can convert your smartphone into a artificial intelligent running device that is you can run your machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms inside the uh, mobile and get the results that that was great ashwath uh, like your explanation on edge computing is uh, really like it was very concise and to the point and it was delivered with uh, much clarity you uh, you also mentioned that you have a blog post so uh, tell us something about that i have started a blog named digi spirit in which i will be sharing my knowledge with uh, stem contents science engineering technology and max you can access the blog site with the url digispirit.ml okay and how uh, how wells can uh, we approach you like the students can approach you as critic viewers can approach me via my linkedin handle which will be available in the description anyone can approach me for anything i will be happy to help in embedded domain or electronics domain or pretty much with anything which i can do okay ashwin so uh, any final piece of advice for our viewers of course kritik i would like to share few tips and advice to present college going students from engineering stream if you are in first year and from indian background of education you must have crossed the biggest boulder of your life the 12th standard so take some rest and understand your college life and make new friends if you are in second year understand what are the different opportunities your uh, course has and what are the different domains you can work with it. engineering is pretty much a practical kind of course you won't be understanding anything unless you are doing something practical uh in the beginning i had aversion towards electronics and it pretty much got rid of when i start working with breadboard and stuffs so uh unless you are doing anything practical you won't be understanding anything because engineering is like that if you are in third year by now you must have understood where your interest has and where your career goals are there so start doing mini projects in that and make some freelancing money and start networking in linkedin and uh, pretty much the other social media also it will be helpful for your career if you are in fourth year and your college offers some placement options get placed there and 
start working towards your dream job after that because you don't want anything any one to ring your head when you are searching for your dream job and the final piece of advice will be find a mentor even if you are a rocket built to reach stars without proper navigation system you will be crashed in the ocean so find a mentor it is the final advice those were few great words ashwath so uh, thank you for uh, taking a part of your time and uh, spending with us on our show thank you ashwath have a great day